Hi folks, I just want to introduce you to this uh, push-pull flyback transformer driver. I recently made a single transistor driver which is working great and uh, one of the advantages of uh, that was its simplicity but the problem with that is there's a lot of stress on the transistor so um, I have decided to make this uh, push-pull driver which uses two transistors and kind of shares the output load between the two transistors. Um, the circuit is readily available from DIYphysics.com and one of the great things about this design is that it has some um, diodes. These are UF4007 fast switching diodes which are uh, placed across the uh, collector, sorry the emitter and the base of the transistor uh, to protect it from high voltage uh, EMF uh, spikes which usually destroy the transistor fairly rapidly. I'm using a big sheet of, sheet of aluminum here which I purchased from Lowe's. You can get this uh, aluminum and just bend it to whatever shape you want. And I'm using mica insulators with uh, a thermal paste between the insulator and the aluminum and also between the transistors and the mica so you know, so it's good heat transfer, and I've kind of marked them. You know, these these uh, uh, two N three O five five transistors have the case. The case is the collector. So I just marked them out to make sure that I don't connect them up backwards. And um, soldered the whole thing together. Got some perf board here, and uh, I've got a switch. It doesn't work very well. The switch is way underrated for the circuit. There's the switch. Um, I just left it on the on position. The flyback transformer, and this one is available commercially. You can buy this from amazingone.com. This particular one has 4,000 turns, and uh, it can't, you know you wind your own primaries on these. It's a great transformer. Provides AC output, so it's non-rectified output. And what I've done, you know, according to the website, is I've put 10 turns with a center tab uh, of um, primary, you know, it's like 18 gauge wire. And then for the uh, feedback coil, for the feedback coil, which is right here, I'm using uh, like five turns of 22 gauge wire. And that seems to work the best. And it's all set up here. And what I've done is just to um, illustrate some of the output of this, I'm connecting this to this big old-fashioned incandescent light bulb as you can see here you know you can get you I don't think you can even buy these things anymore but uh, what I've done is I've taken the uh, high voltage lead and taped it onto the glass and here's the presumed negative lead this is actually a non-rectified output so it's AC output that we're, we're getting here and I'm going to put this on the filament connection right there and uh, this thing will work off at 12 volts, works great off 12 volts, I think you can up the voltage a bit. I actually did modify the circuit a little bit, I added a, uh, a uh, diode and a, an, an extra diode and I added this uh, capacitor just uh, across here and I've added a little uh, indicator diode right there so you can see that right there to indicate that the, the whole thing is switched on and running. So uh, about uh, connect it up and see what happens. We should get some great discharge um, across the argon gas in that bulb. So we'll just see what that looks like. So what I have here is I've got my uh, 12 volt uh, uh, plug here and I've got 12 volt input. This is connected to a lead acid battery and let's see what happens. So we're getting some fantastic output here. Look at that, that's just beautiful purple glow. And uh, I'll show you that in the dark in just a second, but it's really arcing nicely across that argon. It's giving some great uh, color displays here. It's disconnected. Feel those transistors. They're just warm, so it's working quite well. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll view the whole thing again, and this time we'll do it in the dark. So. You get a better view of it in darkness. Um, let's find these connectors here. And connect this whole puppy up. There it goes. 
beautiful altitude. Nice purple orange color. Like fire. It's fairly noisy, I think there's some vibration. Amazing output here. In this incandescent light bulb. Probably making the glass of that bulb quite hot, so I'm going to check that in just a second. I don't want to blow the bulb. Let me just feel this. Yes, it is hot. Not not super hot, but fairly hot. Transistors now. They're not even hot, they're warm. I would say the transistors are warm. Take another look. Let's uh connect this back on. That lead seems to move, that negative lead, and just it's I'm bending it to keep it positioned, but it seems to move away from the bulb. So I think that's part of the reason why the thing is going off. There you go. Well, there you are, folks. I uh, thought I'd demonstrate that to you. Get good output from this thing. Minimal heating of the uh, transistors because, you know, sharing the uh, the load. And uh, see, his heat sink seems to work fairly well. Heat sink's a little bit warm. And uh, some phenomenal uh, displays with an incandescent light bulb. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and. Uh, Again, thank you for, uh, for viewing this video, and if you're interested in more videos like this one, uh, please uh, feel free uh, to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. Bye.